All right, welcome back to another video of Entity Framework. These videos on Entity Framework, I only plan on making this series like four videos maybe max. Here we are. I think we're already on five. Let me let me check. No, we're on we're on five. Yeah. And uh, these videos just seem to compound because I find new things to do with Entity Framework, and I think of new topics, and I hope they're beneficial to you. Hopefully they are if you're using Entity Framework and you're wanting to learn how to use it, uh, like I once did, and that's basically what this channel is. It's just me finding new things to do in code, and then I'm no expert by any means, but I want to share what I find with you guys, and if you like that stuff, don't forget to subscribe. Really appreciate it, and uh, we've been getting a lot of subscribers recently, so yeah. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. Today, if you've been following along, uh, you, you might know that we created an ASP.NET Core web application that I'm using to facilitate learning ND Framework Core. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And what we're doing is we're reading from this database, we're displaying the data, we're adding data to our SQLite database, and we're doing a bunch of different things. In the future, I want to update. Today, we're going to talk about how to use a WHERE clause. So we're going to search our data because let's, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, or let's look at rather, our web application. So here's the add users page. And in the last video, we worked out this table. And what happens when we render this page, it goes ahead and uses any framework to grab all of the users in our database. And let me refresh because I added some just so we could have some more data to work with. Here's our users table in our SQLite database. And it goes ahead, it grabs all these really easily. If you watch that video, if you haven't, I recommend doing so and displays them. What I want to do is I want to put a search somewhere, maybe up here. Then we can search by, uh, you know, you can choose if you're following along, you can do whatever you want to search by. I want to search by name and I want to hit, you know, search and it'll re render this and give us relevant search results. So uh, I took a while trying to figure out on my own application where I'm, I'm learning this. I, I took a while to figure out how I'm going to facilitate this. And I did it uh, a different way than what I'm going to show you on this video. And today we're going to talk about and use something called temp data. So maybe you're not familiar with temp data. I wasn't uh, until, until recently. Temp data is used to transfer data from view to controller, controller to view, or from one action method to another action method of the same or different controller. So what makes this really useful is I can be in one action method and let's say I go to a different view and a different action method. Voila, I still have that data. But the thing is temp data stores the data temporarily and automatically removes it after retrieving it all once. So let's say we have temp data. They have an example name, which is equal to bill. Once we say, what is this? you know, name is equal temp data name dot to string, it will disappear because we retrieved it already. Okay, so what I want to do first, let me make this smaller. This is taking up too much screen. Uh, what I want to do is instead of using the view bag from now on, I want to use the temp data. And maybe it'll be easier if we put some kind of variable up here and we say this list of, uh, what was it, user model? And we can call it users, or you can just say var users is going to be equal to, and then we can say uh, viewbag.users if we were still going to use it. But from here on out, I'm going to use temp data and then users. Okay, let me stop this so we get rid of those purple squigglies. And what did I do wrong here? Oh, I think what we need to do is we need to say as list of user model. Let's see if that fixes this. So now I'm just going to say, uh, so once we have this users variable, I'm going to say if users is not equal to null and users dot count is greater than or greater than or equal to one. And then and users instead of view bag dot users. I think those are the only places we used it. Okay, and now that we have this change in the controller, we need to go back to the controller. Instead of using viewbag.users, we need to say tempdata.users. Tempdata, not dot .users. Um, this way, users is equal to users. Okay, so now let's run it and just make sure it works before we continue. Looks like it's loading fine, so that's great. Um, now I want 
to go ahead and add the search functionality. Now, this might not be the best way to do it. This is the way that I came up with. Uh, you might think of a better way to do this, but in the end, we're hopefully going to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is somewhere here, uh, maybe I'm gonna create a form, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put it right here. And it's just gonna have an input field. So let's say form, uh, that's not gonna work, is it? No. So let's just say form and let's give it an action of home and then let's call this add wait no not add user search user maybe and we'll create that action in the controller next and then method is going to be post okay and we'll make a div classes form group just like above and let's make a label and say search Ooh, we don't want that zero. <laughs> and then input type is text. And uh, yeah, we'll give it a name because we're not gonna we're not gonna bind it to a model, and we don't need a value. And why does it do this? Okay, text. And then we're going to have a button of type submit. And the class, we're gonna make it the same. I'm just gonna copy this button's class. Should have copied everything, but whatever. Submit. Okay, let's see how this looks. Uh, it looks okay. You might wanna do your own CSS to this a little bit. Maybe put it over here and put the button like beside the input text. Um, but for our purpose, it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna put this on my other screen. And let's go look at the controller. So we said we're going to send this to the search user action of the home controller, which doesn't exist yet. So public I action result search user. And it's going to take in a string, uh, which I already forget what we gave the name of it. We gave it name. So let's, <laughs> let's make that a little better. Let's call it search term or I don't know, search term. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So let's say it's going to take in this. And at the very end, at least, we're going to return view. But we're not going to return the search user view because that doesn't exist. We're actually going to return the add users view. And I think that has to be in quotes. Yeah, duh. there we go. So what we do now is basically really similar to how we retrieved all of the of the users from the database. Uh, using any framework, we're just going to use a where clause as well um, to narrow down our search. So I'm going to turn this off because those are really annoying. So just to go over what we did, if you're if you're not following along video by video, uh, we created a list of user model objects called users, and we're going to use ND framework, our demo context that we set up a while back, to say, hey, give me all the users in a list and set users equal to that, and then. We, well, before we put in a view bag, but now we put in temp data, and we're basically going to do the same here. We're going to say temp data users is going to be equal to users. And the reason we're using temp data instead of view bag, if we were to use view bag, uh, it wouldn't make it because we're switching, we're switching views from the search user, and we're going to the add user. So we're actually going to add a where clause right after this db dot user. So dot where, and in here we're going to put a lambda expression. Here you can put any parameter name. I'm just going to put u, and then we're going to say u dot name dot contains, and then we can put in our string, our search term. And then not two lists because users is a list. There might still be more with if I put M I K and we had Mike and I don't know, I can't think of any any other name that starts with M I K, but M Mikhail, maybe? I don't know. Uh, it would return both of those because they both contain M I K only if they're capitalized in the same letter, right? If they have both have a capital M and our search term has a capital M, that's the caveat to this. So maybe what we want to do is we want to make both of them lowercase and then compare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this dot to lower 
dot contains. And then the search term, I'm also going to make dot to lower. I think you got to do it like that. Yeah. So this can be very confusing. But what we're doing is we're saying, give us the name of the users in this database table users. Set it to lowercase, all of the characters in that name to lowercase. And then if they contain the search term, which is also all lowercase, that way we don't care about the casing. It's not case sensitive when we search, which is very key because I'm not always going to, when I'm searching for Michael, and Michael in our database is spelled with a capital M, I might not search that way, but I, I intend to see Michael. I want to see Michael. So I, I don't want to force the user to remember to have a capital M when they search, basically is where I'm getting at. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and just try it. Let's run it and see if we did this correctly. And by we, I mean I, because I, uh, oh, I mean to put that. I don't know. Uh, I have a feeling something's wrong, but that's just by by nature of things. So let's see, I'm gonna put M-I-K, lowercase M-I-K, we're gonna make it a little more interesting. Make sure that we get Mike back. Er, you know what, I did it again. I did this in the first video. I didn't start it with a slash in the form action. Now let's go back, run it again. I knew something was off. Let's go add users, let's put M-I-K. Look at that. It returned only Mike. Okay, let's load it back up, see everything. Uh, let's say I want to put an or statement. All right, how easy is it to put an or statement in our where clause? So let's go back. Now let's say I want to get uh, everything in the search where it contains. And I also want to get Carl for some reason. Carl's really special to me, and I want to see him no matter what. So what I would do is I would uh, put the or the operator or which is the two straight up and down lines i don't know what the character is called it's shift and the button above enter and then i would say u dot name is going to be equal to and string i think carl was lowercase c wasn't it let's go look yeah or the name's equal to carl so no matter what no matter what we search for carl should always come up when we do search. So let's go back. Let's try it again. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put MIK, hit submit. And now we get Carl as well as Mike. And if you don't believe me, if you think, oh, this doesn't work, uh, let's. So where do you have Joe, J O E? Let's put uh, Joseph, maybe. Okay, so I just added Joseph. So now we have Joe, Joe, and Joseph. So I'm just going to search J O this time. And I should get four back. I should get Joe, I should get Joe. Joseph and Carl, now that we have the or. And look at that. We have Joe, Joe, Carl, Joseph. All, all like that. So that's how you do a where clause uh, with any framework core. And hopefully you found this useful and beneficial. And now you have a visualization of it too, which and that's why I like to, to lead by example and to show by example, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe if you like it. Take care.